Donna Summer, the queen of disco, known for her orgasmic melodies, came to fame with her hit, Love to Love You Baby. She recorded the hit single in Germany where she was living with a producer by the name of Giorgio Moroder. He then took that single with him to the International Music Convention in America, where he met Casablanca Records exec Neil Bogart. And from there, Bogart signed Donna Summer. Now, Donna Summer had been enjoying her time in Germany. She did a musical production of Hair, and she did a number of other musicals at that time. And she had been living there for years. She had her daughter Mimi there. She got married, and then she wasn't. And then she had a, another relationship. And so she had her whole life in Germany for seven or so years. But when Love to Love You Baby started picking up and DJs were playing it, the 17 minute long version of it, and it was starting to gradually grow on the Billboard charts, she knew she needed to come back to America to promote the single so it can reach number one and, you know, stay there for a while. So she returns to America and she visits New York where she lived for a little while and she promotes it, the single in New York. Then she travels to LA where she is presented with a cake, a large cake in her image, which they transported by ambulance to the LA airport for her. (laughs) Because, you know, that's how diva she is, you know. (laughs) Teasing. But, yes, this was a big deal for her. So this was her first hit record. And with Casablanca Records, which was a fairly new record label at the time. But with the help of Donna Summer, Casablanca Records was taken seriously. And they had a number of successful artists on their label. But then there came some issues. So in the 70s and 80s, Donna Summer was enjoying a lot of number one hits and top 10 hits, some with a number of artists, Barbara Streisand. And she also had many hits by herself. And some of them she wrote. And then there was Dim All the Lights. But before there was Dim All the Lights, Donna Summer was enjoying success with Bad Girls and Hot Stuff. Now, Donna hints at recognizing the conflict of interest, or at least someone else bringing the recognition to her attention when she says Giorgio took her aside and in his gentle fashion urged her to drop Joyce. Joyce was the wife of Neil Bogart, but she also was Donna Summers uh, manager So Giorgio, the one who produced Love to Love You Baby and other singles for Donna Summer, he was telling her she, Joyce, cannot manage Donna Summer objectively at the same time that she is married to the head of 
the record label that Donna Summer is on. And Summer, she even states that she foolishly resisted his wise advice. Back to Bad Girls, which she wrote with her husband, Bruce. Donna Summer talks about the inspiration for Bad Girls came from her time at Casablanca Records and the label's offices were on Sunset Boulevard and she would see that kind of activity when she was working in the office. So Donna Summer said she wrote Bad Girls with her husband, Bruce, and his bandmates, Joe and Eddie, at their at a friend of hers studio in the valley. And she said she got the inspiration from being on Sunset Boulevard because at this point she did have a house on Sunset Boulevard and also she had the Casablanca Records, their office was on Sunset Boulevard. So she spent a lot of time there, hence the single Sunset People. <laughs> and so she knew the activity that was happening around her. And that inspired her to write this song. And when she presented it to Neil, Neil was like, great, but not for you. It's a perfect song for Cher. Now, don't you find that interesting that he wanted to give that song to Cher? <laughs> well, Donna Summer was not taking his advice. So she put it away for another day. And then... The song came back around. And this time she decided to pitch it to her producer, Giorgio, who she counted as a brother. So she pitched it to Giorgio, who really liked the song and the idea. And then they recorded it again. <laughs> Donna Summer says that Bad Girls gave her another huge hit single and album. And with that, she went on tour, the Summer Night's Dream Tour, to promote it. She also brought along her husband, Bruce, and his, his group, The Brooklyn Dreams. This is when Donna Summer started to realized she could not trust anyone at Casablanca Records. So when she returned from her tour, she came back to the office and someone was congratulating her on her latest accomplishment. Now she thought they were talking about the success of her recent tour, but in fact, they were talking about her new hit single. So I guess she didn't get the word <laughs> that she had another single being released. And the person was telling her, it sounds like it's going to be another hit. That is when she hired a lawyer. So she says she hired Norman Brokaw, who was the vice president at the time, of the William Morris Agency in Beverly Hills. And he gave her some sound advice, which she applied to her career. But, you know, he started getting things straightened out. And it was at this time when things between Donna Summer and Neil Bogart were getting rocky. Now, I know it sounds like... I'm not talking about them all the lights, but trust me, I'm going to work my way up to it, okay? <laughs> so in 
So after Bad Girls, Donna gets a call from... I may have been presumptuous. I'm not sure if it was a call or not. But Paul Jabara, the one Donna Summer worked with on Last Dance, which earned an Oscar, he is the one who approached Summer about the idea to do a duet with Barbara Streisand. And it sounds like this just was spontaneous and took place in, I think, a weekend, she said. It just so happens that Paul was on his way to see Barbara Streisand, and he thought he would just stop by Donna's home on his way to see Barbara. And that is how that came to happen. Barbara, obviously, she loved the idea as well. And so the two ladies got together at Miss Streisand's house. She was Ms. at that time. And they recorded Enough is Enough. Now, Donna has told this story many times before. But around this time that she recorded Enough is Enough with Barbara Streisand, she was on tour. So she said she was doing, she was finishing an eight night sold out run at the Universal Amphitheater when she recorded the single. The two of them were doing their vocals in Barbara's studio. And I'm going to quote Donna Summer on this. (laughs) And she said, Barbara was doing her part. And when it was time, when it was my turn, I came in for the high note behind her lead. But for some reason, I couldn't get enough air. I tried to hold the note anyhow, but I was really more tired from my eight night run than I realized. And before I knew it, I'd fallen off my stool and passed out. My lights went out so fast, I don't even remember hitting the floor. (laughs) And then she proceeds to say, here's the best part. When I came to and opened my eyes a few seconds later, Barbara was still holding her note. I could have died. It was so long. (laughs) It was only when she finished that she turned and asked me, Donna, are you all right? Miss Barbara Streisand, consummate professional. (laughs) All right. So back to the story at hand. Okay. So after they finished it, they... Both ladies knew that their labels would, you know, get into a who's who and all of this stuff, the legalities of it all, and probably negate the release of this single. So they kind of rushed it out so that they didn't have that interruption. And then Donna says, at the time that they recorded this bad girls and dim all the lights were number one and two on the pop charts. Now what's special to Donna summer about dim all the lights is that she wrote that song by herself. She said, this was, I'm sorry, it was the first hit song that she had written the music and words to alone. And it had been a personal goal of hers to achieve a number one single as a singer-songwriter. When she spoke with Neil, she obviously wanted to have Dim All the Lights reach the top of the charts. Bad Girls had already, it was number one at that point, and Dim All the Lights was number two. So it wouldn't have, I imagine, it would not have taken long. And it's 
this is when Donna Summer was at the peak of her career. So another week or two, probably Damn All the Lights would have reached number one. But maybe because Neil saw that Donna Summer was breaking away and she was hiring lawyers and maybe they were making things difficult for Neil and his way of flexing his muscles and saying, you know, I'm in charge. Maybe that was, you know, that slight he gave her just to show her who's boss. Who knows? But for whatever reason, Neil Bogart said to Donna Summer, I will wait until Dim All the Lights reaches number one, which again, probably only needed a week. Donna Summer said that she would, I'm sorry, she said Neil told her that he would have Columbia wait a couple of weeks to let Dim All the Lights reach its peak and then, you know, get its full glory before they released Enough is Enough. But somehow Enough is Enough came out and according to Donna Summer, she said Neil authorized the immediate release of Enough is Enough. And it went on to number one, knocking out bad girls. And obviously Dim All the Lights never made it to number one. And I'm sure Donna Summer is feeling some kind of way about that. (laughs) And she eventually left Casablanca Records. She doesn't say in her memoir that that is the precise reason why she left. But we can deduce from what was happening in that short period of time that played a role in it, I'm sure. Anyway, I enjoyed reading Ordinary Girl and it's actually my second time reading it. I read it when it first came out, back when she promoted it, I saw her, I believe it was on the Wendy Williams show and she was promoting the book. And then I think I, may have borrowed it from the library because I know I don't have it. So, And so then I read it again recently to share this with you. But yeah, that's how the story goes. And I never listened to Enough is Enough until now. And I must say, (laughs) that intro... I think I can tell that it was recorded in a short period of time because it does sound like Donna is not at her best. So that probably is the wear of a tiresome tour schedule. But yeah, the intro, I'm not sure who came up with it, but... It's not great, and it makes you want to turn the station or just pick another song. But and then it, it it picks up, but it's a long and slow intro, and I would say neither of their vocals are impressive on it. But they both were at their peak at this time, so I'm sure anything they laid vocals on, it was going to be a hit no matter what (laughs) anyway I did this video because speaking of Casablanca Records the movie I'm sorry Spinning Gold is coming out soon and I haven't seen any advertising for it but it's coming out and I happen to read an article about it on Essence.com. So that got me thinking about Miss Donna Summer. And so here you go. (laughs) Hopefully you liked this video. Let me know your thoughts on how Casablanca Records slighted 
Donna Summer and didn't let her get her number one hit as a singer songwriter. And let me know if you're going to watch or go see, I should say, Casablanca Records. Now, I didn't even realize that. I don't know. I don't know. Somehow I forgot Donna Summer was a part of Casablanca Records because I remember the other film, which I think is just the titled film or something like that with Beyonce. And I don't remember. I Maybe it's my memory, <laughs> but I don't remember them talking about Donna Summer in that one. But in this Spinning Gold film, they do seem to focus on Summer, Gladys Knight, and I can't remember who the third woman is, but there, there was three female acts that they seem to be focusing on, at least in the trailer for the film. But it sounds like it, it might be a good one, although it's it's also focusing on Anil Bogart. And it is written and produced by his son. So I'm sure he is going to present his father in a favorable way, obviously. But I'm still going to check out the movie, see what they say, because I like those kind of movies. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you for watching and listening. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a like, comment, subscribe if you choose. And I will check you in the next one.